What's up, everyone? Today, I'll be talking about the Federal Reserve, specifically the Fed's monetary policy and its impact on China. This week, the Fed concluded its March meeting and announced a resolution not to raise interest rates. The resolution was not the focus of the meeting, as the decision not to raise interest rates had been widely expected in the market and had been factored into asset prices already. What is even more noteworthy is that the Fed has shown a complete dovish tendency at this meeting. In a short term, at least, the Fed can be seen as being terrified to prick the stock market bubble by continuing to raise interest rates. In particular, the meeting, I think, revealed not only that there would be no interest rate hikes at the current meeting, but also the Fed is not expected to raise interest rates for the rest of 2019 compared with the expectation of two more interest rate hikes just last December. The biggest signal from the meeting was um, a change in expectations for a rise in interest rates and the Federal Reserve's view of the outlook for the U.S. economy. Financial markets had widely expected the Fed to raise interest rates at least once in 2019 and 2020, respectively. Now, the Fed indicates that the number of interest rate increases in 2019 would be reduced to zero and only once in 2020. So the Fed has sent a more dovish signal than the market had expected. For those of you who are new to finance and monetary policy, financial markets usually use dovish and hawkish to refer to the Federal Reserve's looser or tighter monetary policy stance. Um, so the Fed is not as optimistic about the, the U.S. economy if it becomes dovish. Um, and uh, just last year, at the last interest rate meeting, the Fed is still very optimistic. And now it is concerned about the growth prospects uh, of the United States. Now, I think such concerns stem both from problems within the U.S., uh, including the uh, receding, receding effects of tax cuts, uh, the impact of uh, rising government debt, uh, the risk of uh, trade war with China, etc. But it also stands from a severe slowdown in the global economy, including the risk of a hard Brexit, uh, the risk that uh, China's economy will continue to slow down, and so on. However, uh, Paul, as the uh, number one figure of the Federal Reserve, has really uh, learned the wording of speech with Chinese characteristics. At a uh, news conference about the prospects for future monetary policy, Powell interestingly, interestingly said that uh, interest rate expectations are not the same as formal policy decisions and they will continue to observe the situation patiently and if the economic outlook becomes more clear uh, they would move accordingly now for many investors this may sound like uh, just a platitude you know empty rhetoric but as chairman of the federal reserve powell is simply carrying out the tradition of Fed speak, you know, given his influence on global financial markets, he must be very cautious in his uh, wording. Powell's statement neither 
reinforces the excessive dovish expectations in the market, nor does it kill the possibility of Fed turning hawkish again in the future. It just says that you know everything depends on the data. Uh, they are data dependent. Such a statement really helps to guide the market to maintain a relatively neutral expectation and valuation benchmarks. So will the Fed raise interest rates in June and uh, September? According to the current expectations of Fed officials, this probability is very low unless the U.S. economy shows unexpectedly strong growth in the second quarter. That is a possibility, but I don't think it, it's very likely. Given the external effects of the global economy and the state of the U.S. economy, I think the Fed is most likely to maintain no uh, interest rate hikes, but also will not cut rates in 2019. Financial markets, on the other hand, are more aggressive and have begun valuing the possibility of Fed cutting rates in 2019. I think if they cut rates, they'll cut it uh, in 2020 to help Trump with the uh, election, not in 2019. Now, the Fed's monetary policy is really not a temporary move, uh, which is uh, in fact, the natural result of the continuing deterioration in the fundamentals of the global economy since the Fed decided to suspend interest rate hikes at the end of last year. Global uh, economies, including Europe, Japan, Australia, and India, have all sent clear signals of monetary easing. So one of our biggest concerns is what is the impact of these new positions on U.S. monetary policy on China? The biggest impact, I think, is the fuller opening up of the possibility for China's monetary policy. More broadly speaking, the People's Bank of China is now more likely to choose to follow suit and cut interest rates as well. In 2018, in the face of slowing economic growth, monetary policy could only rely on quantitative tools, that is, cuts in the reserve ratio requirement, and there was very little loan for price instruments like interest rate cuts because the Fed was still in a cycle of tightening uh, the, the People's Bank of China's monetary policy has to take that into account because the uh, difference uh, in exchange rate uh, differentials between the two countries would have an impact on renminbi's exchange rate. Today, these external constraints have been largely uh, weakened. After the announcement of the Fed's policy decision this week, uh, the offshore renminbi rose sharply and has now broken the uh, 6.7 mark. And the exchange rate constraint on domestic interest rate cuts uh, has been largely lifted. At present, the key to whether the People's Bank of China will cut interest rates is whether the rate cuts will raise market concerns about turning on the monetary spigots as well as the uh, resulting impulse to re-level up uh, the Chinese economy. This concern is the most important constraint uh, on the People's Bank of China's interest rate cut decision. On the other hand, in the face of declining domestic growth, especially uh, the just-released economic data uh, for February and uh, January, the poor performance of manufacturing investment and the overall weakening of the uh, leading indicators of real estate investment, combined with three consecutive months of contraction in manufacturing PMI, 
I think the interest rate cuts are definitely on the table. The latest report on the work of the government from the just concluded uh, two sessions in China also advocated timely use of deposit reserve ratio, interest rates, and other monetary tools to guide financial institutions to expand the credit, reduce the cost of loans, so as to support the real economy. So taken all together, I think uh, the People's Bank of China is more likely to choose to cut interest rates. As far as the impact on financial markets, even if the People's Bank of China does not cut interest rates, the Fed, their monetary easing is a relief for the global risk assets. Global risk assets uh, concerns about US monetary policy uncertainty can be now put on hold at this until the June meeting. For the Chinese stock market, I maintain a view of long-term bullish stance, even though there may be short-term volatility or downward movement. Investors are not advised to chase high, but they can adopt the attitude of buying on the dips. The more the market falls, the more you buy.